Hey everybody, Steven here, and today I'm doing an unboxing video and playtest for the Sony PlayStation 5 controller here. And I'm doing this on a PC. So Steam announced that they actually now support, if you're on the experimental branch of the app, a PlayStation 5 controller. And this thing, just because it's different than the Xbox, which I have my Elite 2 controller that I use mainly on the rig here, um, I'm just curious to see the difference. Now, with this, you don't get the haptic feedback, the adaptive triggers. I don't even think you can use the built-in microphone with this thing. It's really down the road that I'm a little bit more excited about this because as Sony ports over more and more games that are exclusives, we have Horizon Zero Dawn, we have Death Stranding, titles like this, and I'm really hoping down the road maybe we see God of War, maybe Spider-Man is the big one. That would be the incentive for Steam and Sony to really work together to bring these features. So I'm kind of pulling the trigger way early on this. I'm hopeful that that's the case, but I don't know if that is going to be the case. But I'm also just excited because this controller is different in terms of the shape compared to the PlayStation 4, uh, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, PlayStation, right? So let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. Now I have a motherboard with built-in Bluetooth, so I'm going to connect this via Bluetooth. If it becomes an issue, I may just kind of hardwire it in. But let's get this thing unboxed, if we can. There we go. Okay. Kind of basic packaging. <laughs> That's it. All right. But here is the controller. Ooh, that feels really good. <laughs> that is it right there. That is a very nice looking controller and it feels really good in the hands. Yeah, I like the feel of this. Not knocking the Elite 2 controller here because this thing is really, really nice. And this thing is solid. It's really that build quality. And that was the first thing I noticed when I unboxed that. This isn't quite as heavy. It does have some weight to it, especially compared to the PlayStation 4 controller, but it definitely has a quality feel to it. And then I know right here with the grip, if you zoom all the way in, and I don't know if I'll be able to do this camera. If I am, I'll try to actually highlight that. But they actually have the buttons imprinted on here, and that's kind of the grip. So I like the clear buttons on this also, and just the color of it. The way they've actually done the black and white here is just a really good look. But with this, I'm gonna get this set up, and then I need to configure it for Steam, and then we're gonna hop in a game. And as I do that, I'm gonna, one, showcase that, but then two, talk about my general kind of first impressions when playing some games. So let's go ahead and cut to that. All right, so we're all set up here. You may actually hear the game in the background, but with this, it was pretty easy. So you hold down the PlayStation button here, you hold down the share button. You actually have to make sure that you are all set up in Windows and have the Bluetooth settings pulled up. This will show up after it starts flashing blue as a wireless controller. I mentioned you have to be in the Steam beta program with this. So you go into your account, you go, well, you go into settings, your account, and then in general account settings, it'll actually pop up there. You then have to launch big picture mode. This will show up as your um, DualShock 4 controller. So just because it's not fully supported yet with this, it will show up as that. Uh, and then after that, you're good to go. And I didn't remap anything. You can remap the buttons if you want to. I didn't do any of that. I literally just hopped in this just to see. Of course, I'm playing Halo Reach with this. I'm downloading Halo 4 at the moment that launched today. And it's like ready to go. Like everything is good. It's basically mapped out like the Xbox controller. 
right? Which I'm assuming if you were kind of transferring that over and it was a comparable game, it would be very similar to that. So this thing feels really good. It's just weird to play Halo on a PlayStation controller, but uh, I like the feel of this controller. So let me get shot here. Just trying to see if... Yeah, I'm not feeling any rumbling with this. So, yeah, I didn't think... So if I push this, it's going to pull that up. Share button would do the same thing. So we have basically our pause button. Don't think the PlayStation button is going to do anything. Our microphone in the middle, I doubt that's going to do anything. And then we have our, our just our left and right shoulder button, and then you have your triggers. And those are all mapped just to be the same like they normally would. But yeah, I, I like the shape. I like the feel of this controller. In general, it just feels good. Can't wait to try out some other games, which I actually want to cut ahead. Let's go ahead and get Horizon Zero Dawn, so not a an Xbox game. Let's get an actual PlayStation game running on this, and then uh, we can see how it works with that as well. All right, so we have Horizon Zero Dawn popped up here. Same thing, it just immediately was... Uh, uh, it's even showing that's what I was looking for it's showing the PlayStation buttons on this but it just immediately showed that hey it had support and of course I was kind of expecting that but uh, with this I like to see that it's actually showing the PlayStation buttons feels good so curious to see as I kind of sift through all my games which ones maybe don't have support and I'm assuming in general, those would be ones that just wouldn't have support for a controller that may not just be specific to the PlayStation controller here. I think that might just be, hey, they just in general don't have actual support for that. But man, that feels, whoa, I took them out quick. Feels great. So we'll see, like I said, I am, looking to the future with this and I, I'm really more excited about the integration of these other features if they can pull it off. I don't think so. Maybe sometime next year, but I'm thinking it may be even a little bit longer than that. We'll see. Maybe it comes quicker as we see more games kind of get ported over, but just to have the option. Yeah, Xbox, but maybe I like the feel of this and I want to switch it up and that's really what I'm doing with this. But all the buttons feel great. Everything feels smooth, solid. Triggers feel great. Now this button here not doing anything for this particular game. I don't know if that was the case with it on the PlayStation 4. So nothing happening here. We'll see with settings. Controller. You can do the control mapping. Vibration is on. But I don't know if that's something that. Let's see. Let's get. We'll see what happens. Oh no! Somebody hit me. <laughs> oh, and then I accidentally killed the one that could potentially actually hit me. I'm figuring I would have felt some level of vibration at this point. So, oh, here we go. No vibration. It would have vibrated if it was actually that. Let's go ahead and get out of this though yes so looking over to the big screen over here let's actually go back let's look at mapping all of this out okay let's go to settings controller settings PlayStation configuration shut down after 15 minutes PlayStation 4 controller identify calibrate define layout Preferences, rumble feature is turned on, but that is not actually happening. That was one of the things I was wondering about. Changing color, now we have blue here. I don't think that's gonna do anything to the bar here. Nope. 
Yeah, so that's not gonna, can't do that. Like I said, I don't think you can really do any of these here. Calibrate, if you wanna do the calibration, define layout, this is where you're going to actually then change all of this. And I know it's gonna be hard to see on camera with this, just based off the angle and I have these two monitors here. But yes, you can do all of these things with the controller that are very basic with this. If you noticed, I didn't actually talk about anything else in the box and you're like, well, what is there, a cable or a cord or anything? There's nothing else with this. It literally is just the, the controller and it's, what, it's 70 bucks, 69.99 for this. So that's a steeper asking price. We're looking at the Elite controller over here too. Black Friday sales, you may find it for 100. That comes with a lot more features, um, but a lot of times it's 150 to 200 dollars. So. I do love that controller, like I said, but I wanted to mix it up and actually try this thing out, and I'm happy that I did. So uh, with this really, really quick capacity, the battery capacity is uh, 1,560 milliamps. I've heard, especially because you're using the haptics and the triggers and all that other stuff, people saying, hey, play times can be up to 10 hours, maybe a little bit more, 10 to 15 hours, but I think that's just based off what you're using in game and if you're looking at the rumble feature haptics the adaptive triggers and a game is using a lot of that that's probably going to wear this thing down really really quick so in my experience i'm probably not going to wear the battery down that much i do like that it is usb type c in the front i don't know if i'm going to mess with the headset with this i already have a headset here i don't even really mess with that um on my xbox so probably not going to go down that route i may check just to see, but I don't think the microphone's gonna actually work with this at the moment. Um, and then the weight is 280 grams with this. Like I said, it feels very comparable to the Elite. The Elite's actually heavier, you can feel it, but it still has some weight to it. And I like a controller that has weight to it. I don't like the extremely light ones. I like to feel it in my hands. So I'm impressed with this thing just based off of the feel and it immediately connected to all my games. So that is a huge plus with this. So I'm gonna make sure that a link for this is in the description as well as the Elite 2 controller. But that's, I mean, if you own a PlayStation, you already have one. This is really geared towards anybody that maybe you wanna use it on your PC. And I know that goes against hardcore PC enthusiasts because they're like, hey, keyboard and mouse, that's what I use, right? But I like to switch back and forth. It really just depends upon the game. Like Doom Eternal, I play with the keyboard. That's just so fast paced. I go to Halo and I'll actually just use the, I'll switch back and forth sometimes. I'll actually do that within the same play session sometimes. Also, I'll use both. So it just depends with this. Playing the PlayStation games on the actual PlayStation controller though is gonna be fun to actually do. Looking to the future and seeing that they hopefully port more of these games over has me really excited i also want to hop in red dead and actually try that out see how that works but if you guys actually have questions about this let me know in the comment section maybe there's something that i can actually answer if it's still confusing i know I just kind of briefly talked about this stuff but if you're like hey i want a video showing me step by step how to do this stuff let me know in the comment section i will definitely make that for you guys but that's going to be it for this one everybody if you like the video hit the like button for me if you want to continue to follow along with all my content hit the subscribe button for me thanks so much for watching